Welcome to another video. I am the Starman and I am here in the lockdown garden and um, it's not really the lockdown garden anymore. <laughs> Officially we have now been set free. Uh, well maybe not quite. Uh, there are still lots of restrictions um, in place, rule of six, all that sort of thing, but we're allowed to go out again. Anyway, I've got a treat for you in this video. I've got a telescope to show you. And here it is. Doesn't really look like a telescope, does it? This is a very special telescope. It's a tabletop telescope. As you can see, I've got it on my uh, patio table here. And it's actually a reflecting telescope, a Newtonian reflector, a very compact one as well. And um, not a bad price either. These are about 200 pounds. And this is a really, really nice telescope. It's a Skywatcher 130P. I'll tell you about what the numbers mean in a minute. Let's take a closer look at this telescope. Yeah, so here we are. This is the Skywatcher 130P Dobsonian Mount Reflecting Telescope Tabletop. Isn't it awesome? The Dobsonian Mount is the simplest telescope mount that you can get it's basically left and right you can you can spin the scope around like that on the base and to find the object you basically just move the scope up and down move this around like this and you use the red dot finder this is the red dot finder on top here which you point at the um, whatever you're trying to find in the sky you point the red dot at it it's, it's sometimes a bit difficult to find things by just looking through the telescope so you use this red dot here um, you might need to set this up during the day by pointing it at a distant object and making sure that that lines up with what you see through the scope. And another thing as well, this is actually a flex tube telescope, so it actually extends. I'm going to show you that now. So, this comes out here like this, can you see? The tube extends for use. So it does retract there to be more compact for when you are, you know, when you're storing the telescope. So this is a telescope as you would use it now. This is the way it would be set up. You can see there, if I just take the, uh, the cap off here. So as you can see, it's, uh, it's open here. Now what you can do is you can actually get a cover to go around here if you want. It's not um, essential, but if you have lights anywhere nearby, it might be worth getting a shroud to go around here. But anyway, there you go. This is the way it works. Like I said, you basically just point it. It's so simple, so simple to use. You just point it to where you want to look, what you want to look at. And that's it, really. The eyepieces, I'll just show you the eyepieces. Better show you that, I not Can you see? This is where the eyepiece goes. Like I said, this is a reflecting telescope. So the light comes in down the tube, down here, hits a mirror at the bottom, bounces back up a mirror and hits this mirror here, can you see? That mirror there, that then diverts the light through this hole here, where we put the eyepiece. So we put the eyepiece in here, and there you go. And that's where you look through the telescope. And because this is such a compact and small telescope, um, you're never going to have any trouble looking through the eyepiece, no matter where where you're looking, whether it's straight up or straight down. It's a problem for big telescopes sometimes. When you get a big telescope, your eyepiece might be a bit difficult to look through depending on where it is, but there you go. That's all there is to it. Isn't that amazing? Okay, so I'll just run through some of the technical details of this telescope and give you an idea of what it's useful for. Okay, so this is a Skywatcher 130p and the 130 relates to the size of the mirror. If we look down here, can you see? There's the mirror there, look at that. I'll be able to see myself in the mirror, what do you think? Look at that. So the width of the mirror down there is 130 millimetres. The focal length of the telescope is 650 millimetres. So it's roughly about two feet. So it's 650 millimetre focal length. And that means that the aperture of this telescope is f5, which is actually pretty fast for a telescope it's a lot faster than the refractor that you might have seen in some of my earlier videos, which was f6.8. The lower the number of the aperture, the faster, the more light that the telescope can take in 
and the faintest stuff that you can see you can see really faint galaxies with this telescope like the the andromeda galaxy and things like that this will be ideal for looking at things like the andromeda galaxy now the way that you determine the speed of the telescope is you divide the focal length of the telescope which in this case is 650 millimeters by the aperture which is 130 millimeters and 130 goes into 650 five times and that gets you that magic number of f5 and here's something else interesting as well i've just put a 15 millimeter eyepiece on here now as i said the scope's focal length is 650 millimeters now what you do to get the power of the eyepiece that you put on the magnifying power is you divide the focal length by the size of the eyepiece which you can see is 15 now 15 goes into 650 around about 43 times so that means that the magnifying power with that eyepiece on is about 43 times so this gives you a way of uh, finding out how powerful an eyepiece is on the telescope and a way of making it more powerful is to add a barlow lens this is a two times barlow lens now i can put this barlow lens into that slot there and then put this eyepiece into the barlow lens and that will give us around about 86 times magnification but at the same time we have to be careful because um, it might struggle a little bit. It depends on, on the telescope you use. And I think in this case, I think this could quite easily handle the Barlow lens and the 15 millimeter lens uh, because it's a fairly fast telescope, you see. But you do have to be careful sometimes when you use these. The amount of light that comes out of the eyepiece is reduced quite significantly. But uh, yeah, the Barlow lens can be very, very useful for getting more magnification. Now this is a special edition telescope and it has all these names around the tube famous names isaac newton christian huygens charles messier there's even some women astronomers on there who were very important in uh, determining distances cataloging stars and all that sort of thing now another thing as well is that this uh, actual model here was released about 10 years ago so i think now it's probably discontinued which is a bit of a shame so uh, i've had a look and all i can find are out of stock on all the sites so maybe this telescope is discontinued altogether but what i'll do is i'll put a link in the description to the nearest telescope that i can find to this particular model okay now i'm just going to show you something else as well can you see what i put on the front of the telescope here and this is a focusing aid and they actually use these more for if you're imaging things but you're not really going to be imaging anything with this telescope more than maybe the moon but you know due to it not being a tracking telescope but anyway this is a focusing aid known as a batting off mask and these are really really good for getting the focus on whatever you want to uh, photograph if you're photographing something now the way these work is you point it at a very bright star you have to point it at a star not a planet and i'll just show you here now this is what you should see when it's in focus if it's out of focus you get like a crisscross across the star can you see and that line that goes across the middle is off center if it's out of focus can you see and that tells you there that if you get that perfect alignment of all those lines that means that you're in focus using the batting off mask and they are really really good very useful so there you go that was my little video showing you around the skywatcher heritage 130p dobsonian tabletop telescope isn't it awesome hey eh? i'd really love one of these myself if i can get hold of one because like i say trying to get hold of one of these is not easy at the moment and i think they might be discontinued so i'm going to put a link in the description to the nearest model i find and I think it's um, a slightly smaller version of this. It's a, it's a nice looking telescope, actually. I think it's 100 millimeters aperture. It's the nearest one that I can find to this one. And I would actually really, really like a telescope like this because it's very, very small and compact and easy to set up. And like I say, um, it's the simplest of designs. You basically point it, nudge one way up and down like that to try and track whatever you you're looking at and that's all there is to it now there is one more thing that i would say with it being a tabletop telescope you make sure you put the telescope outside for around about half an hour before you start to use it and let the telescope cool down open it up 
if it's got this flexi tube design open it up and let it cool down outside before you start to use it otherwise you're going to get quite a lot of heat inside the telescope which is built up in, in your house and all that will escape and it'll make a mess of whatever you're looking at you'll get a lot of that um, shimmering effect so there you go i'd like to do a more in-depth review on this telescope and maybe try and use it on something but i'm gonna to have to hand it back soon but anyway hopefully i might be able to get hold of one of these myself i'll certainly see if i can try and get hold of one myself because i really really like it anyway i hope i've given you a good idea of a, a nice beginner telescope anyway if you can get hold of one um the, i think all telescopes are very difficult to get hold of at the moment uh, anyway if you like the video hit the like button and also hit subscribe and tick the bell for notifications of new videos and i will see you again next time